just join us. You're watching us on Point Blank on Razor TV. <laughs> Not exactly on Razor TV, la. More like, like at Media Fiesta, at Marina Square, on Razor TV. Yeah. Eventually. Actually, today is very special because we usually have um, a nice living room. We can sit on a couch. Yeah, we've got this nice red couch, and we just talk about things. Okay. Well, today's topic is going to be pretty interesting. But before we continue. Let's get our guests yep. on our show. Can we welcome Lionel and Li Hui onto our show? Yay! And maybe give them a mic or two. We and yeah, we do have, uh, you know, chairs in excess. So, we one chair's got to go. Okay. Okay, all right. Once again, I'm Kailing and she's Yvonne and we yep. are the guys from Razor TV. You're watching Point Blank. Yep. Um... Again, this is Li Hui, and uh, she is a sales executive, and I would like to call her the potential Mount Everest conqueror as well. Ooh. <laughs> we'll get you to tell us a bit more about that later. And then, yep. and we have Lionel Chalk here. Right, Lionel Hello. is a TV producer. Okay, you must be wondering what these two people are doing with us on stage. Our topic of the day is the strawberry generation. So everybody's like, what? What's the strawberry generation? Can you or not? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we just throw it to our guests. Li Hui, do you know what is strawberry generation? Yeah. Have not you heard of it? you told me to come on this show. Yeah. <laughs> Can you let the cat out of the bag? Yeah. Okay, so what did I tell you about the strawberry <laughs> what generation? Do you remember? Basically, yeah, I think it's, um, from what I know, it's from people uh, who are born in the 80s or the 90s. Yeah, that's basically everything I know. <laughs> okay, so, so you're, you... I'm, I'm one of them, yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, later you'll probably say you're not, la, but okay, for now you are. For now you are. Okay, how about Lino? What do you know of the strawberry generation? Okay, prior to getting a call from how I got to become on stage here, I didn't know about it, I didn't hear about it. I mean, the common term that we call or hear about is your generation X, Y, and then of course now the potential Z or Z. So this is something new until I got explained, you know, I was explained the term and then... So, never heard of it till now. Yeah, that's pretty interesting because... I didn't know of the strawberry generation. Yeah, me neither. Until this show. So, well, what exactly is the strawberry generation? Well, let's find out. The term strawberry generation or Tao Mei Zhu was coined in Taiwan, referring to young people born in the 1980s and later. The idea is that strawberries bruise easily and are kept greenhoused in protected environments and they can't take the heat. So, Generation Strawberry is a label that is far from flattering. It suggests that these young people are spoiled by the good life and crumble under the slightest pressure. And in a way, the moniker Strawberry Generation is the Asian counterpart to the Generation Y of the West. Roughly defined, Gen Y starts from 1976 and ends at 2001. Gen Y defines people born after the Gen X cohort, which are those born between 1965 to 1980. Gen X is also known as the MTV generation, video generation and the 13th generation. Gen Xers saw the inception of the home computer, video games and later on the internet for economic purposes. It grew up in times of no major war and relative economic stability. For Gen Y, its diet was made up of rapid-fire internet connections, cheap airline tickets and the pressure to have multiple academic degrees. The demographic grew up with options their parents did not have. They're more tech-savvy and adaptable, for one. Technologic. Gen Y has also been dubbed the Net Generation, the Millennials, the Echo Boomers, the I Generation, and the Web 2.0 Generation, and now, the Strawberry Generation. <laughs> so in Singapore, are the strawberries necessarily a soft, easily bruised bunch? Well, for Defence Minister Teo Chi Hien, in his response to the tragic deaths of two 19-year-old soldiers last year in Singapore, he considered the difference of the young generation. Whether our soldiers are tougher or fitter, my own sense, not based on any statistical evidence, is that our soldiers are fitter. 
but maybe less rugged. Despite the less flattering vibes of the strawberry label, experts have also observed its strengths. <laughs> In Taiwan, where the term "Generation Strawberries" was born, a political movement called the Wild Strawberry Student Movement has caught the attention of observers. One of the incidents involved the group's spontaneous protest for free speech in Taipei as they responded to allegations of police brutality. The Wild Strawberries used online broadcasting and social networking sites like Facebook and Twitter to mobilize supporters. Experts have said that the tech-savvy younger generation is altering traditional ways of thinking about politics. So, what do you make of Singapore's strawberry generation? Yep, that's the question of the day. What do you make of Singapore's strawberry generation? First of all, do you think there is such a thing? Do you agree that there is such a phenomenon in our society now, in Singapore society? How about Lionel? Do you think it's strawberries in Singapore? Okay, I think、uh, prior to watching the video, I couldn't associate why strawberry was termed strawberry until、um, the description. So, hooray videos!、Um, basically, I think、uh, the protective nature that's described in the video of the generation today is 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 a generalized term because, of course, there are demographics or there are just the generation Y who are also very. Um, hardworking, industrial, and they are very、uh, motivated. But、uh, because they are born in a, a era or day, I mean, generalizing, where a lot of things are already developed as compared to the previous generation. So the previous generations about how you get to go and get stuff is not、um, is not commonplace to them. So there is a differentiation in terms of what I deem what was available at the time where they was born, so to speak.、Mm, okay. I think just now Li Hui very.、Um Willingly admitted that yes, I'm a strawberry. But you know, now that you know the connotations behind like description of strawberry, would you still go like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a strawberry. strawberry. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Is that still you? Um, no, actually. <laughs> Just retract. Yeah, when I defend yourself. <laughs> no, no. When I first heard about it, I thought strawberry generations was just like. Um, people who are born in that era, but then now I I know that it means that people who are easily bruised and. Um, I really don't think that, you know, people like here or people born in the 80s or 90s are are easily defeated. But the, just that I think, like Lionel said, that we are born in a, in a in a, I mean, okay, basically like resilience to the the environment is really how we react to to the environment. But the environment does not.、Um, It's, it's not like we are not born in times of war or poverty, so、like、it does not require so, us. To, yeah, and we never really managed to get to show our true side, you know, that that resilient self that we can be, like our forefathers. Yeah. So, do you think necessarily that the younger Singaporeans, I'm talking about those born in the 80s and after,、uh, do you think they're necessarily more pampered, more spoiled, more sheltered? That they've grown up in a greenhouse where nothing bad has ever happened, like Li Hui is saying, and therefore are actually, you know, not so good with, I guess, hardship. Yeah. What do you think, Lino? Okay, I,、um, I'm speaking from my other portfolio as、uh, a lecturer and instructor, which I also do part time, and I teach the Gen Y or the Strawberry Generation quite a bit.、Um, one of the major observations I found out is that、uh, a lot of them, and again, not generalizing the different income generation demographic, is that a lot of them、uh, feel very compelled to really do something they like, as compared to. I would say my time,、like、where where we、to. plan far ahead and think,、uh, okay, whatever I'm doing now is going to affect whatever I'm going to be doing later on. So passion and drive comes very quickly to you know. And when they set their minds on it,、uh, of course there's many, but when they set their minds on it, they set their minds on it.、Um, this is I, I think aided by the fact that information and communication is very much more available right now. So they really dive into it and and get very、um, you know informed about it, and then they go straight out to it. Yeah, and Li Hui, by your own admission, you did say that you know we are we've born. Okay, I'm a strawberry too because you know I'm I'm born 80s. No, that is just because you're 80s. I think you all are right. 80s. I'm still <laughs> very young, but okay, that's not the point. The point is that you know Li Hui, by your own admission, you said that we were born post-war. You know everything's pretty you know smooth going for us, and therefore we haven't had a chance to show our chops. We haven't had a chance to show that we're resilient. So are you saying that you know therefore? We have not actually taken any hardship, and therefore we can't handle it. 
No, but I think people of today's generation, they look for hardship. Like... Like you, uh, right? <laughs> like a bit masochistic, <laughs> la. I want to climb Everest, yeah. that sort. La. I mean, okay, for myself, I'm aiming to scale Everest this year. I'm going end of this month. And I mean, mountaineering, to a lot of you, my, you, you guys may not know what it encompasses, but it's a lot of hardship. It's extreme cold. You don't get to sleep in like well conditions cause, and there's not enough oxygen. So basically, your body starts to break down as you, as you go higher up. So... I mean, for myself, uh, myself apart, I know of many other people who um, engage in like 100-kilometer races. Like, they go all the way to uh, Mongolia just to do the race, and they pay money for it. And, you know, it's like asking for some kind of pain, right? Yeah. Asking for it, <laughs> in other words. And, and, and I mean, and they enjoy it, and they continue doing it. And there are other, like, endurance triathletes. They, yeah, there are a lot of these people out there. But I guess this goes back to Lionel's point about passion, right? Um, could it be because people like you and me don't really have to worry about um, putting food on the table and all that? That's why we have all this time to make ourselves go through all these things in the name of um, passion. Actually, that, I think that might be true because, I mean, just to share with you guys, like, for example, for me, I'm, I'm, in, I'm doing mountaineering. And my dad, although supportive, my parents are supportive, but they, are, they don't approve. You're like, why are you Yeah, why, why do you have to go and why climb? Why, why torture and, yourself? And, and the thing is that I take about two to three months off work on no pay leave to go and climb. Wow, that's a huge <laughs> commitment actually. Yeah, so, so to my mom and my dad, they are like, what is passion? Like, why, why are you doing this? You're, you're, you know, you're taking time off work. How can you work properly like that? Um, what, what, what will you do in your career? And they, they just cannot figure it out. Like, for, especially my dad. My mom is just like, oh, okay, whatever. Let so, her do what so she wants. So the hardship is not really a hardship that is involuntary, but a voluntary hardship. self self generated self inflicted <laughs> Okay, the thing is, uh, Li Hui, I, I don't know. I don't know many people who want to climb Mount Everest or are even attempting to climb Mount Everest. Would you say that you're in the minority here? Um, for Everest itself, no, actually, I know of like a number of people in Singapore who are trying to scale Everest. I mean, of course, my team, we are made of six women. And also there are like individuals who are willing to pay the money to go. Yeah. And not just Mount Everest. I know of a group of mountaineers in Singapore who go to scale at mountains on a regular basis, like on a yearly trip or something. So they, that is also difficult in itself, not just Mount Everest. Yeah. Okay, so what then? Okay, we've said something, uh, we've said all there is to say, you know, most of what there is to say about what you think the strawberry generation is not. So what do you think this generation is? What characterizes this generation then? Because there must be some basis for them to come yes. out with something, right? I mean, are we exhibiting certain traits that... That make us, you know, so kind of weak. La. Like a tofu vibe. La. Like yeah. we're kind of like tofu. A bit soft, like. Silken kind. La. <laughs> okay, thanks. You know, you know, there are different kinds of tofu, right? There's okay. the porous kind, there's the tau kwa, and then there's silken tofu. And so we'll start talking about strawberry <laughs> milkshake, which will really <laughs> you, not make you, sense. You guys have yes. lunch, so. Those who haven't had lunch. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. So we asked Lino, I mean, there must, be, there must be some basis for them to come up with something like that, right? I think going back to what uh, you were discussing earlier regarding taking time off, you know, to pursue your passion because your environment sort of can award it or sort of can buffer it. There's, of course, the other school of thought, which is people who have got all this passion and they can't fulfill it because they have to fall back on doing something that they not necessarily like, but because of their current situation. So this could be as simple as taking up a job which they absolutely hate, but it brings in a dough, you know, and you drag yourself to work every day for it. I mean... To break through that is considered a hardship to me. Um, again, among the students and also the number of uh, Gen Y people or you know teens that I come across with, there are very few, to be honest. There are very few. Um, the common mindset is, um, if I can't find something I like, I'll just wait for a while. You know, rather than pick up the newspaper, go to classifieds, delivery driver, or something that is out of comfort zone and just go for so it. So you're saying they're not as driven? Um, again, I can't generalize, you know, it depends on the situation that they are so-called, you know, uh, in. But uh, across the board of the group that I, I am exposed to or come in contact with, there are very few. There are few, very few that step out of their comfort zone to want to do something that is going to be readily there, uh, you know, uh, rather than something that they feel very, very interested or very, very passionate about. Mm. Okay.